Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin. Thanks for joining me today. Remember to leave comments, like, review, share, all that good stuff. Well, just sit right here and I'll tell you a tale, a tale of a fateful coin that started in this Dansko book full of barber halves. So we're going to go ahead and today explore as best we can in a Dansko album where we kind of run out of room a little bit with our filming studio here. Uh, something that's really pretty remarkable to do. We're going to review the series just a little bit, grab the red book, maybe grab the gray sheet, and just talk about what we're looking at. And look at the Barber Habs, which is just a stinking tricky series to put together. Of course, Charles Barber, uh, the designer for the quarters, the half dollars, and the dimes all at the same time. And uh, what we're looking at is just how difficult these coins are to put together into a series when you start looking at uh, some of the mintages, which seem like they're not too bad in the 1890s, but some of them have pretty high price points and pretty low mintages, that 92.0. And then you get further down here, we see we got highlighted uh, the 96S with a high mintage, and yet survival rates are low. 97.0, 97S, same thing on those coins, where you really see a just a uh, small, small amount of them survived. And then I won't even talk about what happens when you get into coins with uh, meat on the bones, extra fine and higher. They just they can get kind of silly in price. So this series has 73 coins in it, 73 trombones. And it's kind of a fun series because uh, it's very challenging to find coins that are in a solid good condition. Lots of time barber halves are known for showing up with less than good condition. So you're going to see rims that are completely gone, uh, completely flat designs, and oftentimes they're going to be really bright. What's really cool about the passion of this collector is, as you can see, most of these coins at a glance are actually not cleaned. So we'll hold the light up here, and you can kind of see what's fun about sets also is you get the idea when you look at a set like this, just kind of... At a glance, you start to pick out differences. It helps train your eye to coins and coin collecting and coin grading in general. So like if I pulled out this uh, these eight coins right here and just said, okay, which one's the nicest coin? Go. And then right away, you know, your eye will scan and you'll notice all the flat spots on the 97 and the 96. And then you'll see that 98 and you'll be like, oh, well, you can see detail up into the wreath on the hair. And look, detail around the eye socket and start to see the differences on those. The other thing, of course, is color when it comes to barbers in general and all circulating coins. You start to see the difference in color and you can see just at a couple different angles here as we turn the book a little bit, those uh, some of those top line coins a little bit like that 92.0, the 93, and the 94 down here in the second line are all just a little bit bright and, you know, probably would not straight grade, although I've seen coins that look like that straight grade. But most of these coins would straight grade, and it's just a, a lovely, a lovely feat. And hats off to the collector who put this together because this is a full set, which is not the type of thing that you will see uh, just any day of the week. You know, you go and you look for this type of stuff at a at a, um, you know, on on. Uh, why are my words gone? This is hard to find, people. Maybe maybe I shouldn't work for 12 hours and then decide to start filming. Maybe maybe there's that. So you can see one of the things that people look for, of course, is you want to look out for little like remnants and things like that. But uh, after that, though, you can see a, what a marvelous job he did on this entire set. And most of the coins are going to be in good condition, but a number of them are actually going to be in a nice solid VG condition where you have a little bit more at play on the face. And we're going to go right on through here into the 20th century. I mean, think of all the changes that people saw between 1892 and you know, the last year of this issue, of course, is 1915, uh, where you started to see uh, all the, that big changeover in 1916 to the Mercury's the uh, Standing Liberty Quarters and the Walking Liberty Half Dollars. Let's look a little, little bit on the back of these guys just to get an idea of kind of where the wear is. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the series and just kind of check out some more of the highlights. 
Now, for some series, when you grade a coin, they're going to tell you, you know, you have to have a full rim. Uh, but for a lot of coins that have a, depending on the wear patterns, if you have a full, full rim, you may be already pushing a VG coin. You know, you see this O mint mark coin right here, which has just a touch of wear into the rim. When they talk about the rim and wear into the rim, they're talking about the difference here in the A and the M and the E in America versus this coin here to the right, the estimate that we're looking at now, where you have pretty much that A, M, E, R. That's all, none of that is blended. Now the rim is still gone, but the letter's not blended at all. And then here, if we go one more, now check this out, you see that you can see all of it and you can see the rim, but then when you get down near five o'clock, all of a sudden, boy, that gets a little soft over there. But you know, that has to do a little bit sometimes with just how the strike of a coin can, can really vary. Let's glance at the old Red Book and see what she says about grading these coins. Red Book is fun because it has just a little descriptor about each coin. Date and legends, legible, liberty, worn off of headband. Some letters legible for VG in liberty. Okay, so like this is like super boiled down. Liberty nearly complete. So they're focusing only on the liberty, liberty, liberty. And then, but if you look at these, you know, you're gonna say, well, there's a lot more to a coin than just the word liberty. And that is true. But let's see based on that process alone, if we can start to see any liberties to get to a VG, um, I would argue that you don't need to get to a full, uh, to be able to see the lettering, to be able to get a coin to a VG grade. So, I mean, as an example, you look at the difference in some of these coins and just the amount of wear, like on this 92.0 versus, for example, this 92S, and look at all the leaves you can see here. You know, that's such a huge difference, and yet this 92.0 would grade a good. So now goods four, you can also get a good six. So you can actually have a good that's better than a good. So you can go a four and a six, but then when you get to VG, you're talking about an eight and a very different beast. I also like to note just, you know, you start to see a little more separation in the eyes and around the ear and the jawline. Lots of different separation. But let's see if we can actually find some lettering here on the headband for Liberty on any of these coins. So right here you've got, uh, that's that's your L. So Liberty actually shoots up across here in this little spot. So right there you can just make out the L a little bit on there. And you can see that has this kind of a similar separation, maybe a little bit more on the I there uh, than that previous coin we are looking at. I'm gonna grab that 95S, which looks like it's a nice VG and rotate it so you can see which coin it is and what it looks like on the back. You know, and we got a pretty clear E Pluribus Unum on there, some separation into the eagle. And so a really, really nice coin. And so this is a really cool set. This is super challenging. And for some of you who've put sets like this together, you know exactly how challenging it is. Let's talk a little bit, little bit about mintages and values and you know just what's really survived in this set. Uh, usually when you're using the red book or the gray sheet, I mean, what you can do really quick on either of them is just scan for values that are unusual. So right here, this is not included in the normal set, this 92 micro O. You can see that that's not included in the set. The micro O actually has an O that was made for, I believe, the quarter or the dime and got punched into these things and they're super, super tiny and they're very hard to see. Um, so oftentimes people mistake things. They see something that looks a little smaller, but it ain't the micro O. You'll know it when you see it, folks. So when you're evaluating a set, oftentimes people will only look at the key date coins kind of to see what, what's there, you know? So we looked at that 95S, which was a really nice coin, you know, and you can see how much they, they almost double in value, you know, on those first few grades because finding fines is very difficult on a lot of those coins. So as we look through here, we're gonna see that the uh, mintages on some of these really start to balloon up into the two, two million, all of a sudden you hit five million on uh, that 99.0. And then that's the Franklins. Let's come back over here to the, uh, to the Barber halves. And once again, you see a lot more consistency. Whoops, look at that, 1927. What's that guy doing? Let's not turn two pages here, folks. There we go. This uh, 99S, that's a little bit better. Uh, you'll see once you get into the 1900s, a lot of the mintages are high, high, high. And then you have some, some dips down here. 
But a lot of these dips don't actually affect you too much. So in other words, like this O4S, which is a semi-key date, it'll cost you a little bit extra in good and BG, but the real pain doesn't start to get into the higher grades on some of those coins. So in some of the ones, 500, 600,000, you know, same thing. Some of these don't even really jump in grade until fine. Now I've seen it where if you try to buy these coins certified in some of these lower grades, it's a little bit of a premium. When you see the Red Book use just like a standard price point, like it's all the same price for a long time. Uh, you know, what is that like Michael Jordan, Daryl Waltrip, two different sports, I think. But when you see the price point stay the same, usually it's just an indication that this is the base model and, you know, whatever the base model goes for currently in the marketplace, that's going to trade at that level, right? And so especially these, these small jumps, sometimes you won't even see people distinguish between a good to a VG on price points that are that close in price. Usually you see people really jump around on price points when you start seeing something where the price points really move from one grade to the next. So in other words, like on this 1913 Philly where they only made 188,000 of them, you know, they're really going to scrutinize the coin on that. Same with the, the 1914 Philly, the 1915, um, you know, 13, 14, and 15 Philly. Let's take a look at those coins really quick and just see how they look on this set. Let's see how we did for this set. Try not to knock my camera down like I normally do. 13 Philly, nice, even, good coin. Uh, you know, just maybe a skosh bright, little bright. Same with the 14. 14 is definitely a little bit brighter. One of the things that you'll see here is, you know, this even tone all across that coin. On this coin, you start to see some of the dark areas and then a bright area in the field. Oftentimes, that'll indicate somebody kind of like tried to clean it up a little bit, brighten it up a little bit on that. Um, you know, so it just depends like if the open fields, uh, and the other open fields are different colors. So there's an open field here and here, you know, you want those open fields to kind of be a similar color. It is normal for the devices. So the design area to have a darker area around it because it's kind of just holding things together. So 1914, 1915, all really nice, uh, solid, good coins. And he got, got a little bit of extra Liberty going on up here in that 1915 D. So what does the gray sheet say about all of this awesomeness here? Well, the gray sheet lists the entire set. It goes, uh, it starts way down here in this book, 1915. You know, it doesn't include the micro O. But uh, by gray sheets numbers, you can see the same thing you saw in the red book with all those numbers kind of having a very similar price point for a long time here in the 1900s. Uh, they show the 73 coin set at about 2,500 bucks, 2448. And then in VG, you see that huge jump. You know, that huge jump to almost four grand really is probably mostly made up of just like those better date coins. So once again, focusing on your better dates, that 040, 04S, you can start to see the, the price points jump. Here's your uh, 97O and 97S. Also coins that jump a lot into uh, good to VG. Um, and then they astronomically after that 97 O 97 S let's look at those and then we'll close the book on this deal and, uh, you know, call it a day 97 O 97 S let's see just how they did on these 97 Philly 97 O 97 S and look at those. Those are both really nice coins. Now, you know, that after comparing them to some of the other coins and you've looked at a bunch here whether you know it or not, your eye starts to get trained to all the different things you're seeing, just like those levels, those different little levels of, um, you know, hairlines, hair, hair, <laughs> hair today, gone tomorrow, right, folks? But just the amount of uh, hair visible around the, the forehead and the ear, and then the amount of leaves available on there, 97097S. I'm going to look at these upside down for you because I'm sick of flipping stuff. And here again, you see how, just how different the obverse and reverse of a coin can look. With the really full rim on the O mint and the S mint, you have a weaker rim. But also you saw just how much detail was on that 97S. So anyway, uh, this is a lot of people's passion. They put sets together like this, raw sets together and dance go albums. It still exists. It's a hard thing, it's a challenge. So if you really wanna challenge yourself, you can try to put together a raw set of uh, barber half dollars sometimes called Liberty head. Sorry about that folks. People use different terminology. I don't always stay with it. And in fact, I have older books where they call them Morgan heads. So generally most people use the term barber for the quarters halves. 
and dimes. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.